Hello there, Cancer. Welcome to your solar eclipse reading in the sign of Libra occurring on the 14th or 15th of October, depending on where you happen to be in the planet. This is for all for all Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus signs. OK, check out all four of your readings to get the big picture. And I do throw, throw Venus in there in this particular eclipse because throughout the month of October, we've got two eclipses going on, one in Libra on the 14th, 15th of October, and then one on the 28th or 29th of October in the sign of Taurus. So Venus is the ruler of both Venus, um, Libra and Taurus. So Venus is the planet of Ah, oh, the planet, Venus is the planet of love and money and resources and fertility and new beginnings, growth, abundance, things coming to fruition, the things we find beautiful and the things that we take pleasure in. So wonderful energy that is coming in there, um, through these eclipses. However, um, they are eclipses. So eclipse energy does shake things up a little bit. Uh, we get surprises. Sometimes we get people uh, coming out of the woodwork that we haven't spoken to for a long time. Um, we do get things that we don't expect. In this particular solar eclipse, it is very action packed. And we do have the possibility of revisiting something, having a second chance at something, um, you know, even if it's just people, relationships, opportunities, um, all of these doors can open for us a second time because this is a south node eclipse. The south node is where we've come from, right? It's like we have from south to north. Um, the north is where we're going, our future. So our south node can be our past and this is a time where you may be doing some extra reflection, where you might be reevaluating something, reassessing something. Are you where you want to be? Is there something that you need to change? Eclipses do bring change. Um, they can bring a little chaos as well sometimes too. Uh, so we just never always know what to expect. Um, but with yourself, no, you could have a second chance at something. You may be um, giving yourself another opportunity for something here in your world as well. Um, this can be in this particular new moon because it is in the sign of Libra. Libra is a very focused energy on relationships, legalities sometimes, right? The law, um, justice, right? Think of justice um, and uh, balance and harmony. So you might be looking at new ways to restore um, all of that or make things better um, in there. Some of you may get some luck and love in this energy, new moon, solar eclipse, things are on fire. We can manifest things into our life. Great portal for manifestation, by the way. Just make sure you center and ground your energy because it is eclipse. So, right, we do want to, we do want to make sure that we've got both feet on the ground with that energy. Um, but some of you may also really, um, end up, um, if you've been having power struggles in a relationship, this may be where things really do, uh, come to a climax for you. And so this can be where you either reset your relationship, you detox, uh, you talk things out, you restore the balance and status quo there, or you could have some fiery ending in that, right, with the solar energy there. So, um, but the, yes, the eclipses can um, eclipse things out of your life. So we've got a lot going on with this solar eclipse. In this particular one, you're probably going to be feeling this quite intensely. Um, this is in your fourth astrological house, which is ruled by the moon and of course it's the house of cancer as well so um this is all about your home your family life your private life in this energy um the things that make you feel secure um the things that are part of the foundation that you've built in your life so if you don't feel as though you've got things on a good foundation this might be where you're making some change um this also does have to do with your ancestors and your family so your parents your um, children, and you may even be looking at something from your childhood here in this energy as well, because some of our belief systems can be evolving and changing at this time also. So you might be trying to figure out what do I believe in today? What, what is still relevant to me today, right? And what do I, what am I changing? Where am I evolving in my life? Venus is in your third house in this energy and your third house is all about your communication um 
This can be about travel. This can be about your neighborhoods where you live and your social life. And with the fourth house here, some of you might be buying a new home. You might be moving where you live. Some of you might be having some um, evolution in your relationships, right? So uh, you could be moving in with a romantic partner. Some of you might be getting married or engaged at this time. Um, some of you could actually have some changes in regards to your home life, especially in regards to your parents. Maybe you're moving closer to them uh, in, you know, if they're getting a little bit older, um, you could be having your parents move in with you. So maybe you're blending all of your money together, buying a bigger house that so you can have like an in-law suite down below or something, and then the family home up above. And then that way, you know, everyone's around each other to support each other. So you could be having some interesting things going on there. Um, some of you might be wanting to take uh, some trips at this time, right? How do you, you know, infuse a little bit more love and romance into your relationships, Libra and energy, right? With the sun passion, um, you know, you might go on a little romantic getaway or something like that, right? Tourist in your own town, even, um, you know, just maybe even it's a night on the town. Um, for you, right? Just try something new, something different, something where you can kind of spice things up a little bit and reconnect with your person. So you could have an expansion of the mind. You could be expanding um, your communication, talking to new people, or just talking things out with people in your life right now. So this can be a really great energy for you. Some of you with the third house having to do with your devices, and we've got Venus in there um, with some new energy, perhaps. Maybe some of you are buying some new uh, devices, a new phone, a new computer, something like that, something that can help you, um, you know, better your communication or, uh, you know, um, put you in contact with the world at large, right? Maybe your computer kicked the bucket a little while ago, probably within a Mercury retrograde period there. And uh, now it's like, okay, I really need a new one, right? Or my computer is really slow and I need something faster. Um, so you could be doing something like that. But your perception may be changing. This can be within the third house energy where you're expanding your mind, you're seeing things from a different angle, a different perspective, which when you're dealing with family and home and relationships and maybe even thinking about the future, that's a really great energy to have, right, is to see the big picture, is to see things from other people's point of view. Um, it can really help you um, to communicate better or to understand um, other people's wants, needs, desires, and issues in there. So a lot going on for you guys. We have follow the moon, watch for the signs, okay? So this can be um, a very important moon for you where you are seeing some signs. We've got butterflies on this card. So changes ahead, transformation, growth. This can also be where you want to spread your wings and fly a little bit, um, especially if you feel as though you haven't um, had any fun lately or uh, you've been stuck at home maybe and now it's like, yes, I need to get out and explore the world. So this can be where the travel comes into play for you and likely shorter trips, um, not necessarily overseas, not with the third house energy. It's usually a little bit closer to home. Um, so whatever your situation is, though, your intuition is heightened. It always is. And especially at this time of year, not only do the, does the moon cycles heighten our intuition, but at this time of year, we're coming into the winter season, the veil is thin, right? And this is an easier time for us to connect with our higher selves, to connect with spirit, to connect with the um, universal energy, right? With our spiritual soul tribe, angel spirits, guides, ancestors in the fourth house, right? Ancestors. So, um, you know, light a candle and put it in the window. Make sure you don't have any drapes or anything like that around there, right? We want candle safety. Okay. But when we light a candle and we put it in the window, we are, um, you know, letting our um, past loved ones know that, hey, you know what? I'd like to see you bring me a sign, right? And it's easier to do that at this time of year. Um, so watch for the signs, repeating numbers, your dreams might be extra um, intense at this time, right? And, um, you know, for some of you, it's um, what are your emotions as well? Um, uh, because that can be a sign of things, right? Tapping into our body, we always look externally for signs, but sometimes internally is where we find those too. So whatever your situation is, the signs are guiding you. We have zombie energy coming out here as well. And this is about control. So this may be part of a relationship and a power struggle in a relationship for some of you. 
Is there someone in your life trying to control you? Are you trying to control something too much? Are you trying to control the outcome of things? Um, so this is control, not just with other people, but also with you, right? When we try and control things, we squash them. We restrict them. We restrict ourselves, right? Being, you know, ha having that control is like having a heavy hand. And in that heavy hand, we are no longer in the flow. We're no longer open and receptive. We're no longer, you know, free flowing in our energy, right? We're no longer allowing things to happen when they're meant to happen. And so with the faded events that are coming in, the faded energy that's coming in with the eclipses, this is that reminder. We can't always control everything. Some things are meant to happen. Some things are meant to follow a natural timeline and we can't speed it up and we can't slow it down, right? That's not within our control. So have a look at that word control in your life and see where you need to release control. See where you need to deal with issues if someone's trying to control you, all right? And see where maybe there's, you know, something here that does need to be released with this energy, all right? This can also be about how you engage with people. Sometimes we do need to kind of control our emotions, right? control what we say a little bit. Eclipse energy is very intense. You'll be feeling this intensely considering you are very much linked to that moon energy. And um, this can be where emotions run high. So sometimes we need to just take a step back a little bit. And even if we want to blurt something out, count to three. Count to three, take a deep breath, and then speak. It can sometimes make the world of difference because then we're just kind of, huh, uh, we're centering ourselves and we take that deep breath. And we end up maybe not saying exactly what we wanted to first blurt out that came from a place of emotion. And instead, we're a little bit more controlled and maybe a little bit more polite in those things. We can still be honest and truthful, right? But we're not, we don't have that impulse, that emotionally charged um, energy, right? So think about conversations you have with people when sensitivities are running high, emotions are running high, and how you word things, right? It's not about what you're saying or the point you're trying to get across. It's how you're wording it or how you're presenting it. So in that energy, you can take that step back, take that, um, you know, controlled measures, right, that can benefit you, and then speak your truth but maybe in a calmer fashion, right? And it'll actually help someone be more receptive to what you have to say, all right? We also have the witch energy coming out here, the earthly weaver of the world. Okay, look at that fire right there. This is a time of heightened activity for you. This is a time of um, spiritual connection and growth for a lot of you here in this energy. You may have some epiphanies um, around this time. And again, of course, your magic within, your power within. So, you know, use your magical powers. We all have them internally to manifest something into your life. If you can envision it, if you can dream it, um, you can attract it towards you. This is a great time to work with an element of fire. Um, at the solar eclipse, light a candle, like we already said, but you can light a candle for multiple things. You can light a candle, put it in the window. As long as you don't have anything that's going to catch on fire, please don't burn your house down. Okay. Fire safety is number one, uh, spiritual engagement number two. Okay. Um, but in this energy, you can use candle magic for a lot of different things, right? For example, um, a white candle can bring in, a white candle can be used for anything, right? It's a neutral kind of thing, but it can invoke peace and harmony in your life. It can invoke um, a spiritual connection, right? Um, it is a very calming energy. It's also a newer energy, right? Being white, being pure, where we can invite new things into our lives. Pink can be used for the things that are gentle and things that are lovely in our lives, right? Bring us pleasure, bring us love, bring us, um, you know, some uh, wonderful gentle energy, right? We can use with purple, right? Purple is a power color. Uh, use that to work with Jupiter, right? Jupiter likes fire and Jupiter likes um, likes purple. And uh, so we can do that. And Jupiter is our beneficial planet, bringing us good luck and good fortune, good karma, abundance, expansion, growth, all of those kind of things. So however you work your magic, this is a great time for you to bridge the gap between worlds. We've got the three of pentacles, the knight of swords, 
and we've got the emperor here for you guys. So this can be a really wonderful energy. The emperor does bring um, fiery energy to you, okay? And uh, so, you know, the emperor also does bring, it's number four, right? So it, actually, we've got a three and a four. That's so interesting how that came out um, because, of course, the solar eclipse is happening in your fourth house foundation, strong foundation, emperor, right? Your um, parents, right? Your family, emperor energy, okay? And your sense of stability and security, emperor energy. Very interesting. Your third house is where Venus is, and we've got the three of pentacles. And the three of pentacles, yes, it's an energy of building a foundation. It's an energy of creating something and seeing the results right? The threes are the basis of manifestation, right? Because we've got to have that creative energy. But three is also where we do talk. Because three can be about teamwork and collaboration. It's where we can seek out some guidance and some support from somewhere, seek out some wisdom with the emperor energy there as well. So um, this can be about teaching and guiding or learning and being receptive, right? The three of pentacles sometimes does come out if we have, for example, a relationship that's gone a little bit off kilter. And this is where we can seek out that neutral third party to help us to get things back on track, right? So think of like couples counseling and things like that so family counseling right um those kind of things can come up when we have the three of pentacles and we've got that third house energy all about the communication and talking about things and everything so very interesting how that's coming out for you there and of course we do have a knight of swords which does invoke action action oriented energy very much about news, messages, communication. Some of you have something very interesting coming towards you, some interesting proposition, interesting news, something that is quite um, powerful in your energy and does require you to make a decision, um, to get things out in the open, to discuss things, right? You're very called to action in this energy, but it can be something very exciting for you here with that, all right? So with the Three of Pentacles, this is where we're working together with people, we're sorting things out, it's a very positive energy, and we're seeing the results, all right? So that collaborative effort can really come in there, but it also does show your power to create something that you want, to envision something that you really do desire, right? To state your intentions, Knight of Swords, be very cl clear on what you're wanting to attract in, what you want to change, what you want to resolve, be very clear in your intention, and then take those steps forward that you need. But the Knight of Swords, when we've got this communicative energy, it's also a reminder to be open and perceptive. But yes, with the Emperor card, right, this is Aries energy, so very fiery energy here for you. And this can be where you do talk talk to um, a parent where you do um, take charge, you take authority. Um, this is also about um, being successful, right, in your endeavors and feeling like you've got both feet on the ground, feeling like you've got a really good foundation, you're feeling good about things, you're feeling like everything's on track, everything's where you want it to be. And uh, it is an energy of success. So whether this is you, um, whether it's an important person in your life that you're resolving issues with, or whether it's just something to do with situations around you where you're feeling like, you know what, we've got things back to where we want to be. And I'm feeling really, really good in this energy. So very strong energy there, very powerful. We have light coming in here for you. It's time to reveal your radiant light to the world. A very beautiful energy there for you. You're expanding, you're growing. Uh, fruition, we've got that wonderful energy there for you. Rest assured your dreams and visions will come to fruition. Very nice, very nice energy. So uh, just remember, it's a time of manifestation and growth and a time of harvest for you. Um, remember, the eclipse energy starts here in the solar eclipse and goes the next six months. So you're really looking out into the future. And remember, allow things to unfold the way they're meant to in their natural energies, right? But remember to be ready for action when you need to be. We have dreams here for you. The universe speaks to you through your dreams. So again, pay attention to your dreams right now and not just your nighttime dreams, but also your daydreams as well. And we have wisdom here. Also, there's your third house energy. See your adversaries as opportunities to expand your spiritual light. Kill them with kindness resolve our issues, whatever that looks like, and then spread your wings, move forward. And this can be a really wonderful time for you to get those feet back on the ground. 
I'm going to leave that there for you folks. I hope there was something here for you. If there was, please do take a moment to press like on this video. It lets me know you resonate with the reading, but it also lets the YouTube algorithm know that other people should watch the reading as well because you liked it. So I thank you very much for that. I hope you have a wonderful solar eclipse and I will see you a little bit later and watch for the lunar eclipse ones. Bye.